Okay, so I'm going to be um, talking to you about uh, the uh, final component of the uh, CTRC course, which is the uh, bioanalytical core. Okay, um, this is the, uh, you already know that this activity that we've been talking about is called the Technologies and Resources for Core Laboratories, and it's one of the key activities of the uh, CTRC. And our co-program director is the Dr. Marcia Cruz, uh, who will, uh, was here um, most of the, the uh, for most of the activity. The activity leader, myself, I am uh, here at the UPR Medical Sciences Campus. And uh, you've already heard our, our co-leaders, Dr. Uh, Yamamura from Ponce, University, uh, Ponce School of Medicine, and Dr. Eddie Rios uh, Olivares from Universidad Central del Caribe. Uh, the reason I put this up is just that I wanted to show you where we are in the organogram. We're right here. Uh, so we are one of the... Uh, functional components of the, of the uh, consortium, which uh, uh, our goal, well, I put it here, I think I'll just read it quickly so, so that we can uh, get to the slide as, as fast as possible. Our goal is to uh, contribute and complement the research education, training, and career development plan of faculty conducting clinical research at their respective institutions by providing them access to research infrastructure technical and educational support, and thereby encourage PIs to, in, to incorporate translational approaches in their research, as well as promote the creation of new collaborative translational projects. You notice there's translational is, is, is a uh, frequently recurring uh, word, as well as uh, education, training, access to infrastructure. That's what our function is. Um, we won't tell you how to make your project translational, but if you decide to make it translational, we're there to try and help uh, by providing technology or instrumentation, or uh, if we don't have it, to procure it and make it available to you. Our specific objectives uh, is, are to establish a network of the intra and interinstitutional library res resources, of which this activity is a part. We're beginning now to meet and uh, discuss what we have in common. Actually, before, when we were actually writing the proposal, we, we got together, we looked at what uh, our resources were, how could we inter, inter, uh, interact uh, productively to support our clinical and translational scientists, uh, provide access to expertise and instrumentation in the available technologies for clinical and translational research provide and develop training in emerging translational methodologies uh, directed at developing translational science. So the facility I will talk to you about is the Bioanalytical Laboratory. Uh, as Dr. Uh, Fernandez mentioned, the, the Bioanalytical Laboratory is located in what was the RCRII Clinical Research Center. So it was the clinical laboratory uh, that provided service for the investigators of the Clinical Research Center. Uh, the RCMI uh, uh, sponsored clinical research center. So uh, this uh, laboratory continues to function, it just uh, has a new name. Uh, these are the uh, uh, staff, uh, the, uh, uh, Licenciada Nilda Gonzalez Hernandez, she's the lab manager and she's the medical technologist that uh, runs the, the lab. And uh, her contact information, nilda.gonzalez1, UPREDU. Araceli Arroyo, who's uh, also a medical technologist in the in the lab, Araceli.arroyo at upr.edu, and myself as uh, lab supervisor, I just facilitate and uh, make sure that everything runs smoothly and help them uh, if they have a problem. I help them out uh, to to solve the problem and keep the lab uh, open and running. And you can always uh, c contact the lab through the. Uh, uh, Telephone listed there, 7590306. That's the, the telephone number for the uh, CTRC. So uh, Dr. Rios and Dr. Yamamura um, uh, mentioned that, uh, uh, or I believe it was, maybe it was Marcia Cruz, so that you could 
contact the CTRC and find out information about getting the, uh, the, the presentations or finding out about the operation of the program, you can go uh, to this number and uh, mark extension 226 and that'll put you in contact with the lab. Okay, uh, some of the specific activities that we have in the, uh, in the uh, laboratory. Uh, the, the laboratory focuses primarily on clinical, clinical laboratory services. Okay? Uh, uh, so I, that's what I'll be um, focusing on in the presentation. Um, you, you'll see that uh, they offer uh, services, general routine services such as centrifuging samples, preparing slides for, for analysis, storage of samples, packing of samples for shipping, uh, shipping the samples, okay, they, they will pack them for you, they will ship, they will call FedEx, FedEx will come and, and uh, pick up the package at the lab. Uh, they can preserve your samples uh, uh, as, you, as you specify and store, uh, before storage. Uh, the personnel uh, that I just uh, mentioned to you in the previous slide, uh, Nilda and Aracelis, are certified for shipping uh, dangerous goods such as uh, bio, biohazardous samples. And uh, there is a risk communication program and uh, compliance with OSHA and workplace safety standards in place. Other activities, uh, there's uh, support services for processing serum samples. As I mentioned, the, the, the uh, strength of the lab is the uh, clinical services, so they, they can do the comprehensive metabolic panel for clinical samples. They do uh, uh, glycohemoglobin in whole blood, uh, CVC, uh, urinalysis, microalbumin pregnancy testing, and isolation of uh, PBMCs from whole blood. Uh, this is the equipment available in the lab. I, I, I will say that you know it's probably not available just for anybody to go in and use. It has to be uh, justified. That there are uh, most of these instruments here are available for conducting the clinical tests that they do. But uh, you, you, as, a, as a researcher, as an authorized uh, user, you would have used to the general um, instruments such as the microscope, incubators, refrigerators, spectrophotometer, um, centrifuges, and the real-time PCR system. There are uh, multiple compliance standards that the laboratory uh, maintains. Um, there are quality control and quality assurance procedures that are conducted regularly. Uh, I should say, uh, though the, uh, the laboratory is not certified by Department of Health, it maintains the standards of the Department of Health in their uh, 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 procedures for quality assurance, quality control. So um, uh, the equipment maintenance, calibration, and certifications are done routinely, weekly, monthly, as, as required. So that the uh, the results are you know uh, very reliable. Uh, there are patient privacy and confidentiality uh, procedures in place. Uh, OSHA standards are are uh, upheld. There's uh, approval of the procedures by the administration and federal aviation, specifically for shipping uh, hazardous uh, biohazardous samples. Fire Department approval, the Environmental Quality Board of Puerto Rico, which would, which basically covers, uh, you know, dispose, storage and disposal of, of hazardous waste and biological waste. And of course, the, as we all know, the Police Department, uh, is re we require approval by the Police Department for ha having explosives or potential explosive chemicals. Uh, some of the SOPs that are in, pre in place for uh, patient privacy and confidentiality, I think this is a very important point for those of you that are conducting uh, studies with patients. The uh, use of computers and telephones are, are uh, strictly uh, uh, regulated. Uh, all personnel, authorized personnel have a, a password. 
Uh, there is uh, limited access to the laboratory, meaning that only authorized persons can enter the laboratory area. And the entrance to the, uh, to the center or to the consortium area requires uh, uh, viewing through a camera and, a, and a, as you all saw, well, some of you may, may have, may have, that have been there may know, it requires uh, uh, authorization to actually access the building. Uh, the results, uh, management of the results, um, I believe this refers to uh, that uh, the uh, results are maintained in a secure uh, uh, place under uh, lock and key. Uh, the results are delivered directly to the PI uh, unless the PI uh, authorizes uh, another person in writing. The uh, critical values report, uh, the, the, the lab will report critical values when these are uh, uh, important for uh, uh, treatment of the patient. Um, preliminary results and equipment printouts disposition. I guess this, this refers to uh, the samples are stored for up to two years. After two years, they are destroyed. So uh, uh, in this way, we ensure that the uh, they are not, you know, made available to other 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 outside sources. And reference laboratories, if the researchers use reference laboratories for uh, studies, uh, these these results are mailed by the reference laboratory direct to the PI and do not come through our lab. Uh, the guidelines for the use of the laboratory and for uh, uh, other uh, issues relating to uh, users of the laboratory are at uh, the RCRII website. Uh, later when the, uh, sent the consortium website is up, up and running, we will transfer these guidelines to the CTRC website. Uh, also for information about service fees, uh, you can contact uh, Nilda Gonzalez, and uh, that's her uh, email, nilda.gonzalez1 at upr.eu, and the lab telephone, which I mentioned previously, 7590306, extension 226. We had a, a presentation planned for uh, the uh, INBRE uh, uh, course at Rio Piedras. And uh, Dr. Uh, Sandra Pena, who's our uh, uh, the PI of that program, uh, could not make it. So I I took the liberty of adding a couple of slides to just to introduce the program, let you know that it exists, and some of the cores that they have available. Uh, the P uh, the Imbre is also called PR Abre, okay, Puerto Rico Alliance for the Advancement of Biomedical Research Excellence, and they have a centralized research and instrumentation core, and. Um, one thing I should explain uh, up front is that the, uh, this program prioritizes the undergraduate institutions in Puerto Rico. So that's their, the priority of that program is uh, the, the, these institutions. But uh, other graduate institutions and research institutions can have access to uh, what, they, what they offer, being uh, instrumentation and uh, training activities, which uh, uh, you know, is, is in line with what we're trying to do as well. So this is why we, we're really interested in, in, in maintaining the link with, with this program as well. It's localized in the uh, Department of Biology at UPR Rio Piedras, and that's the website, abre, A-A-B-R-E dot H-P-C-F U-P-R E-D-U. And on that website, you will find the centralized uh, research and instrumentation link and you can see what they have available and the activities. And uh, just wanted, I just wanted to include this table because it has uh, four important uh, facilities which I think are of interest to all of you uh, and, and to us. The Functional Genomics Research Center, which is uh, coordinated by Dr. Peña herself, and they have uh, uh, instrumentation uh, that are uh, of interest for people that do uh, gene expression analysis, RNA and DNA work, microarray uh, studies, and they have a laser capture micro dissection instrument, which is something that's very rare, you know, very rare type of instrument, and you might want to know that it's there. 
uh, and they have uh, a uh, real-time PCR machine as well. They also offer services, uh, sample processing, processing for tissues and nucleic acids. Uh, there's a sequencing and genotyping facility uh, uh, coordinated by Dr. Thomas Herbeck. They have uh, DNA sequencing capability and they can do polymorphic analysis of DNA markers and they, that's what they do as a service. Protein mass spectrometry core. Uh, this is uh, coordinated by Dr. Irving Vega. They have a, a LTQ uh, MSMS uh, which is uh, like, like our instrument in the proteome core here at the Medical Science Campus and they uh, meant they uh, can do service of identification and characterization of proteins and a protein x-ray crystallography core uh, by Dr. Eric Schreider and uh, this they they offer uh, services for uh, determination of protein and macromolecular structures okay so uh, that's that's my presentation for for today